we're going to just go over the updates of Galileo AI and take a look of the difference between what we had before, what we have now. So in order to do that and to make that make sense, we're going to go through what happens in the first episode and then do the exact same prompt to see if things were good. The main point that we had was the creation of a detailed page of a TV show for a streaming platform with the main color being purple. That was the only prompt that we gave and it had a good start, but it also was really wrong in its understanding or explanation of the content. Most of the things here were saying things on the left where it was on the right, things that was different layout when they were the exact same and it really was bad. This was last year, it's been a while. I'm gonna copy paste this and create a new version for the web. So now let's see what it generates and how it explain its content. It's the main, the most important thing, the explanation. From what I can see, it did two instead of three. So that's a change. Interesting. It looks similar from a first, first glance. It looks really similar to what we had before. It is a bit more organized. It's a bit more similar to what we have built. Design two variant of a TV show detail page. The first variant presents a clean layout with the main purple theme. Prominently features the TV show poster on the left, I'm guessing. Zoom out, bitch. On, yeah, on the left, accompanied by the title, genre, and essential shows information on the right. Below the section, viewers can find an overview, cast details, episode list, and recommendation for similar shows. All accented with a subtle purple highlights. Good. I appreciate it. Thank you. Second variant also embraces the purple color scheme, offering a more dynamic arrangement with the TV show poster taking center stage surrounding elements, including a bold display of title, genre, release date, and rating above the fold with overlapping cards below for overview cast episodes and similar TV shows, suggestions, uh, creating visual engaging experience, nothing else. Okay. This is Galileo AI. This is a tool that we tested last year and it is my most viewed video on YouTube. I want to do a bit of a re-review one year later to see if they have improved based on what I just read. They haven't. They said the first thing, Vine presented a clean layout with dominant purple themed, prominently featuring the TV show poster on the left. I don't see TV show poster on the left, I see a TV show poster on the center and TV show poster on the center. That's wrong. And then they are saying, accompanied by the title, genre, and essential shows information on the right. I don't see anything on the right side of any of these screens. So this is wrong from the start. It's the same thing as last year, which is crazy that they haven't fixed. God damn. And then episode list and recommendation of similar shows. You have the episode list, which is season one episodes, and then recommendation of more like this, which is that that is true. That is what they have here. However, the second one, they say that it's centered, that it taking center stage, like the post V show post and taking center stage, which is true. Surrounding elements, which means that there are things left and right, not the case, yeah. <laughs> include bold display of title right there and general release date and rating above the fold. So all of that above the fold makes sense. Cool. However, with overlapping cards, there is no overlapping cards and below for overview cast episodes and similar TV shows. The only thing that we have here, we do, we do have the episodes here, but we have to cast there it again as the first time, giving us like a bit of a, an explanation of what it has created without giving us a good explanation or true explanation of what it is. So that is wrong. Let me check the previous one and see if the designs are different. They look really similar. The main thing that I can see is that they have the tabs navigation underneath the description compared to right now where it has put it this at the top, just underneath the poster. That's potentially better. That's a debatable things. And then after that, we said settings page to check if it was a bit better. We'll do the exact same prompt and just use that 
as our current prompt. Second prompt here. First off, the output is good. I think that right now, the fact that they have the Figma file, as always, you can copy paste to Figma, which is the goal. And then you also have the code. That's something that we didn't have before is pretty interesting. However, the explanation is also bad compared to last year. So I don't like this. I do like this though. Rounded theme, purple color. That makes a lot of sense. That is really cool to have here compared to before. I do like that explanation really bad. Let's wait for the setting page, which had, as far as I remember, a very iOS feel, which seems to be the case. This one is a bit more wide than the first version. I think it's going to be very similar. I'm sad about it. It shouldn't be. It is very much the same. They do have a different type of header, as far as I can tell, based on the previous version that we had, like different header styles. Here we have login, upgrade, and search. And there we have search and then the tabs. And on these ones, we only have the tabs. That's an interesting thing. The first variant feature user-friendly layout with a sidebar for navigation between different settings, categories, such as playback, notification, accounts, details, blah, blah, blah. Each settings is visually defined with toggles, which is in drop-down, which is the same. The second option, the modern design with tabs, navigation, where? At the top. Tab at the top? No. A different user preference sections. The settings are neatly organized with clear labels and intuitive colors, controls for customization. None of them have the tabs at the top. None of them have neatly organized stuff. It's the exact same th stuff. The second one is more chaotic than the first one. That's crazy to say that it is different. And it is the same. Going back to the previous thing that we had last year, the output that we had here is really much the same. However, it is, or it was, a neater column base layout compared to what we have today. The header is the same. The picture here is different, but that's the only difference. These, as you can see, these two were the exact same. The only difference was the top section that changed. And these two were just longer instead of. The reason for that is because we have email and password, which needed to have edit access. That was last year. They did say the exact same thing, as far as I remember. The second design is a setting page features a tabbed interface at the top, allowing the user to switch between different sections. They said that there was tabs here, which is not the case. And on the newer version, second option, they said the second variant of firmware and design was tabs navigation at the top. So it seems they have some sort of a pattern or something that is predefined in how they can res respond or how they are supposed to generate the layouts and the UIs. And they don't follow any of their own <laughs> constructions, recommendations. Yeah, as you can see, it's the exact same thing. It's just the titles and header that changes. We have a bit of a more bright purple here. And then on this one, we do have mostly the same design, uh, even though they said it was different, it is mostly the same. For the sake of the exercise, I'm going to take the one that is the most complex and we're going to copy paste to Figma to see if that works, create a new files and just paste around here. What do we have? We have a very much one-to-one -one comparison or transfer, except this. That's the main difference that I can see. Layout based, everything is an auto layout frame. However, everything is an auto layout frame, which is the same thing as last time, meaning that my title and my paragraphs are in two separated auto layout frames instead of being in one, because that's a section. So that's interesting and good to know. Everything else works. I don't know if, and we're gonna see if that's the case. We have some sort of responsiveness going on. To an extent, like this is bad in the retraction, the top is good, but it's also cropping the content. So that's not the best. From what I can tell, we probably have something that's state uh, a max width for the content. And we probably have something that's state. Yes, exactly. There's, there is a max width of 960 for this content. That's interesting. It's good to know that they have 
implemented some of the newer features that Figma had that didn't exist uh, at the time. But again, same as last year, most of the content that we have here, the naming convention is really bad. Nothing makes sense in how they have written the whole thing. That's debatable. Now, I haven't done that before last year, but that's because we didn't have code, I think. Let's see if it's good or let's see. I don't know, but we can see. They are using obviously Tailwind for this. So that makes sense. Uh, they have their icon directly SVG inside of the file. I'm guessing everything is in there, which is the case. It seems to be pretty simple in terms of syntax and layout. Again, not an expert in there. But because it's using Tailwind, it's going to be way easier to maintain and also for designers, way easier to go through and say, well, you know what, that flex column, it doesn't need to be a column, it needs to be a row. So that's something that can happen really quickly. I do like that. It's 500, 400 lines and you have an export to Replit. Oh, that's pretty cool. Replit is, if you haven't heard, we might do a video on that at some point, but Replit is an AI assistant kind of thing that can help you basically build something and plug it with the code base directly. And you have access to all that basically with the plugin with Replit right now would mean that you have something that is hosted, maintained and deployed on your behalf through Replit. So that's basically the same thing as Vercel, I think or similar to so I don't know much. That's the thing. But yeah, that's the, I guess, that's going to be the overall overarching Galileo update. It is good. It's not better than last year. It seems to do the exact same errors. And it's also seemed to have the ability to tell you things that don't exist in the design. Again, would I recommend it? No. Maybe if you need something really quickly and you don't have any idea of what you're doing, potentially it could give you like a bit of a base for your layout or your page, but I would rather you buy like a UI kit or something that contains the pages that you need rather than do that. But yeah, that's about it. See ya. Cool. <laughs>